Okay, we're going to look at a Bible subject that probably may not be too interesting, but we're going to look at bitter and bitterness. Now, bitter is a sharp, cruel, sarcastic, painful, afflicted, and it's sinful. It has a taste that is sharp, pungent, and disagreeable. The taste can be found of dandelion greens, citrus peel, cranberries, cocoa, coffee, green tea, red wine, and leafy vegetables. It can also be a bitterness to a toxic plant to make you know you ought not to be eating this. And many animals and insects recognize this bitterness in leaves and fruits and plants that, no, don't do, don't eat this. Uh, more sensitive is called super tasters. And they're of the Asian, African, South American, and many of these places, vegetables are disagreeable. More food you would find grapefruits, mustard greens, olives, and tonic water. So bitter has its own distinct taste. It's in the realm of food. I mean, my jury Americans take part in coffee and cocoa. Some take part in vegetables, leafy vegetables. And in some plants, it's toxic. It's a warning that don't eat me. So when we see bitter, Genesis 27, 34, as we start running the scriptures to see what bitter is, Genesis 27, 34, and when Esau, this is one that God said, Jacob, I love, Esau, I hate. Esau sold out his birthright for a mess of beans. Jacob has claimed that birthright by being subtle, deceiving his father with the help of his mother. And Isaac has blessed Jacob, and Jacob is scarce gone, and he's out. He ain't going to show up when Esau shows up. And Esau has learned that his father has already passed that firstborn blessing onto Jacob, but I don't know if Isaac knows that Esau sold it. So when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a bitter, with a great, exceedingly bitter cry. This is the first time bitter shows up in the Bible. And said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, my, oh my father. So the first time the word bitter shows up with a man who has no regard for God. He regards the flesh. And instead of taking the spoonful of medicine that he has swallowed by giving up his birthright to Jacob. He cries with a bitter cry of, of anger and, oh! And yet the Bible says that, you know, he cried, he sought it with tears, and yet he despised his birthright. And we see to be, as you read the rest of the chapter, he gets very angry. He's angry enough to say in his heart that I'm going to kill my brother for what he did. But Esau, you sold it. It's your fault. Exodus 1.14. Exodus 1.14. We move on to and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field field hands picking picking crops all their service where they made them serve was with rigor here is a bunch of slaves who have been mistreated who has been abused who has been worked to be worked on top of work and you do more work, the Bible says. And I'm not talking about the Africans in America. I'm talking about the Israelites in Africa. 
We don't teach in the public school system how the Africans of Egypt mistreated the Israelites, the children of God, in the book of Exodus. And yet here's a bitterness. Oh, we can't have certain things like cotton. We can't say certain words in America. But we forget that the African put in bitter and rigor and hard service to the children of God in slavery. Yet you don't see the Jews rise up. And what is bitter? Slavery, hard, hard work, torture, pain, suffering, being bitten, being smitten, cruelty, work upon work of work in the heat. It's making their lives awful. So it's severe treatment. And for Esau, it's, oh, man, I lost it all because of my stupid brother. And when we look at a bunch of slaves, the children of Israel, the children of God, oh, man, they're making us work so hard. It hurts. God, relieve us of this pain and torture. And God, maybe... Be not deceived, God's not mocked whatsoever man so that he should also read. Maybe the slavery of America was what you did to the children of Israel. God said, I will curse them that curse you. That's my two cents. Some people may not like that. Exodus 12, 8. I don't care what you don't like. That's a great possibility. Exodus 12, 8. You know, it does say in Genesis that uh, Canaan would be a servant of servants. Bible. Exodus 12, 8. And they shall eat the flesh in the night. And this is about the Passover. This is the land that would be slain and the blood put upon the doorpost and on, on the lentil that when the destroyer comes, if there's blood, God says, I'll pass over you when I see the blood. If there's no blood, the destroyer is going to go into that house and the firstborn, whatever age, whoever it is, is going to die. And this is a Passover feast that will last and is supposed to last throughout all the Jewish people's lives. And it's even done today. Some wrongly, but it's done today. So about this Passover, when they shall eat the flesh, the, the lamb, in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs. That's what we talk about the fruits. These are herbs and, and, and leafy vegetables. What a taste. And the Passover night is not to be, oh, it's so great, can't wait. It's not so free that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Oh, the bitterness that his creation gave him. Not that Jesus had bitterness, but what the creation gave to God, bitterness. I thirst, and they gave him vinegar. They mocked him. And they brutality treated him. They treated God with bitterness, hardship, anger, cruelty, completely just giving to Jesus Christ all that he could handle. That no man could handle. No man could take the abusement that Jesus Christ suffered. According to the scriptures. So we see bitterness as in Exodus 1.14. It's severe. It is severe how they treated Jesus Christ. Chapter 15.23. Chapter 15.23. And when they came to Mar Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. Mara means bitter. Israel's on their way to the promised land. They come to this body of water. They, they go, hey, we got something to drink. And they put their mouths, they put their cups in it. However, they go, they start drinking this water, and it's bitter. Oh, sharp, pungent, disagreeable. <sighs> 
case. How awful. And yet when you look at Revelation chapter 3, the lad to see in church, God says, Jesus says that you're neither cold nor hot, you're lukewarm. And because you're lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my, out of my mouth. You, you've got a disagreeable taste, church. And there's only one reaction to that disagreeableness of the bitterness that the church is today is, <clears throat> ah, get that out of my mouth. Give me something better to taste. They couldn't drink the waters. And God spoke to Moses and he threw a tree. And the waters became sweet, but here's bitter. Here's bitter. And later on, they found 12 wells of water that were good. They didn't wait. Impatience. And if they had moved on, they would have found those 12 waters, 12 wells of water that would have been satisfying. Numbers. Chapter 5. So it's definitely something severe. It is something, oh, what a taste. I can't agree with this. Harshness. Numbers 5.18. Now here's a woman that her husband thinks she cheated on him. Or let's call it right. The man thinks that his husband has committed adultery against him. He brings the woman to the priest. In 18. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head, the veil, and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water. We just came from bitter water. That causes the curse. Verse 19. And the priest shall charge by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man has lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband be thou free from the bitter water that causes the curse 23 the priest shall write these curses in a book and he shall blot them out with the bitter water 24 and he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that the cause me the bitter water that causes the curse and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. 27. And when he that made her drink the water, when it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and has done trespass against her husband, that the bitter, excuse me, that the water that causes the curse, with the bitter water, shall enter in her and become bitter. And her belly shall swell and her thighs shall rot and the woman shall be a curse among her people so here's the event i think my wife has gone to another man besides me and here's a bitter water purpose not okay we're, we're traveling along the wilderness here comes a body of water <clears throat> yeah here comes a man says i think my woman my wife has been unfaithful to me here is bitter water that is in the hands of the priest and he makes this woman drink the bitter water. She has no option. Well, she has an option. She could leave and be called cursed. And the bitter woman enter the bitter water enters into the woman, and she has not set outside her husband and her marriage vows and the marriage bed. Nothing that comes to this woman. But if she has has stepped out on her husband, if she has defiled her marriage. The water goes into her and becomes a bitterness, becomes a curse. And her thigh and her thigh shall rot, her belly shall swell. Because she stepped out. And we've got a sick church today. Because the church has adulterated itself has committed whoredoms with Satan and in the world. And God has the church, hey, here's the bitter water. Drink it. And they're sick. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you know, the Christians are sick because of adultery. You know, what I'm saying is the church age is sick. 
because the church has stepped outside of Jesus Christ, its pride. And just look at it, just rottenness, it's curse. Cursing. It's a horrible thing to happen. And yet it shows whether the woman was true to her husband or whether she was unfaithful to her husband. And as we said in Revelation chapter 3, if God spews thee out of his mouth, uh, you've been unfaithful. You are not satisfying God at all. Numbers 9-11. Numbers 9-11. I apologize how dark it is, but it looks like we're going to get some storms here. My lights, all they do is light up my face, so I apologize. Numbers 9-11. The fourteenth day of the second month at even shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. There is the Passover again. That eating of those herbs that is sharp, budget, disagreeable. You got to do it every year. And they got to do it until the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, has died, has been buried, and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Then the Passover is done. It's no more a Jewish ordinance because there's neither Jew nor Greek, Romans chapter 10. We're all in the body of Christ, and what we take part in is the Lord's Supper. That's not bitter bitter herbs. That's not, well, uh, we have unleavened bread in the church, but no bitter herbs. We drink the grape juice, which is a type of wine for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, but there's no bitterness in the church. The bitterness of the nation of Israel with Passover is, they can be, uh, how can I say it? As far as their sin, they are able to have the sins forgiven, but they're not forgotten until Jesus Christ suffers and dies and goes into paradise and sets the captives free. Then there is complete forgiving and forgetfulness of sins. The church has no bitterness because we're saved. We're washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 32, 32. Deuteronomy 32, 32. For, the, for their vine is the vine of Sodom. That's not a good vine. And the fields of Gomorrah. That's not a good field. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. For their rock is not as our rock. Well, there's one church that says Peter is our rock. Peter's not my rock. Peter was never the Jewish person's rock. It's always been Christ, Paul said. And when I take part in the Lord's Supper, it is grape juice. It's not the blood, but it symbols the blood without being the blood. It represents the blood of Jesus Christ, not the blood. And when you got a church that says this is the literal blood of Jesus Christ, or you use intoxicating liquors, God says, hey, that's like Sodom and Gomorrah, you filthiness. That's gall. That's bitter. This clusters are bitter. That is a sharp, pungent, disagreeable, afflicted and sinful and painful offering you are having your people of your church to take part in. I spew thee out of my mouth. Ugh, that's horrible. And that's what God thinks of those who take part of the Mass. That is not Bible-centered, that's not Bible-approved, and has never been done by Jesus Christ or any of the apostles, nor any Bible-believing church. Everywhere the Bible forbids or warns against the drinking of alcohol beverages, and yet you go into a church this side of Calvary, and we got hooch. Vile. Esther 4.1. Esther 4 1. Sin is bitter 
That woman who has stepped outside of her, that's bitter. It's rotten. Your offering to God is rotten. It's bitter. It's distasting to God. Esther 4 1. When Mordecai received all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. Now, here we got something serious, unlike Esau. The Jews are going to be killed. They're going to be executed by the words of Haman, by the king. On this set day, all people can go and kill all the Jews you want. You think World War I and World War II, you think the Nazi parties and Adolf Hitler chasing the Jews to exterminate the Jews with something new. That is found in the pages of Esther, chapter 3, around about 510 B.C. With death overhanging. With my people and myself are going to be killed in the hands of these people. Oh, God! Help us! In a book that doesn't mention God at all. Esau, I didn't get the first blessing. Oh, Father, I'm going to kill Jacob. Oh, God, we're in trouble. We need your help wailing it's a sharp pungent disagreeable cry that Mordecai's making and the people around us like shut up Mordecai you don't want to hear that it's like preaching the gospel I don't want to hear that will you just shut up with some other filthy little words that I heard today in my face when I preached the gospel it's agony it's life or death that's bitter. Esau, he didn't get what he wanted. Oh, the, 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 the bitter herds of the pastor. Oh, these things taste so terrible. Wait till what Jesus will suffer. You want to step out of your husband. Oh, you just, you're just going to get a curse and your body's going to rot. If you want to be wicked in the eyes of God as a church, <laughs> can't taste that water. Yuck. Bitter seriousness. Job 3.20. A man afflicted by the devil speaks about bitterness. You knew it would be in the pages of Job 3.20. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto him the bitter in soul. Oh, my life is just... Job has been lost everything by fire, by theft, by war, by battle. His children were killed by a whirlwind. When the, the house collapsed on him, his wife says, curse God and chain thy turkey. Oh, and these three idiots show up and they're just giving me a hard time, beginning to give me a hard time. God, I am suffering. Why did you give me this life? My life is disagreeable to me right now, Lord. Mordecai, oh, Lord, we're in great trouble. Job, oh, Lord, I'm in great trouble. Help! I'm not happy right now. When you look at Job and his sufferings, I am not having a good time. Bitter in my soul, the eternal part of me, Job wants to die. That's how bad it is. And many, many people since the pages of Job have gone through that. And God keeps them living. God keeps them going. God is long suffering for many for many people. Say, it's because they're lost and they take their last breath. They would go into hell. The law suffering of God is I give you a little longer so you can hear the gospel and you can believe on my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm going to give you another day of misery because I want you to do something for me. I still have a purpose for you because for a Christian, if God is done with us, he would take us home. If a lost man, if I call you on death right now you're going to hell 
But realize, I had a woman today, oh, if you get Christ, everything would be as happy donkey, and it would be singing all kinds of lovable animal songs and all that. No, life is not like that. And I quoted to her, uh, as soon as I said it came out of me, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Bitter can be, oh, our nation. Bitter can be, oh, me. 1326. 1326. Oh, bitter is a serious word, and you know what? Thank you for listening this far. Because some people are going to bitter. I'm not interested in that. For thou writest bitter things against me and maketh me to possess the iniquities of my youth. How about things that are disagreeable in our life? How about disagreeable things and sinful things that God writes about my life? See what he's doing there. Give me the pen. He's making a list and checking it twice. That's not Santa Claus. That's God. God's recording to us. Don't we have 66 books where God is giving us actual stories of actual people who are real? And the consequences of their sins and their repenting has been recorded. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Until then, it's written down. What's the bitterness? It's disagreeable to God when I sin against him. That's bitter. That makes God... Ugh, <laughs> horrible when, it's horrible when a Christian walks down the middle of the road. It's horrible when a Christian is lukewarm. lukewarm. That makes God sick. He doesn't want to taste it. 23.2, Job. Job 20, 23.2. 23.2. Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groan. This is Job is suffering. Job is having a hard time. And respectable. I mean, Job is, I mean, have you heard the patience of Job? That's the patience of Job. Lord, I'm not, please. Lord, I am miserable. Lord, I am not having a good time. Lord, I'm suffering. Lord, it hurts. Lord, I am very disagreeable. And yet the Bible speaks about the patience of Job. Psalm 64, 3. We're getting storms outside, so it's getting darker, so. Forgive me. 64.3. I probably don't want to open up there. Who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Even bitter words. There are people who will speak disagreeably about others. There will be people out there who are toxic to other people with their tongue, with their mouth. They have a sarcastic, they have a strong, they have a painful, they have afflicted, they have a sinful mouth and tongue against others. And that's not acceptable. Now, I use sarcasticness. I don't use it to defame anybody. I don't use it to hurt anybody. I just use it as an attitude to stupidity. But I don't use sarcasm to, to hurt anybody. And yet there are people out there. We can have a bitter bitterness to other people by using our tongue. And if that's disagreeable to others, it's surely disagreeable to God. That's harsh. That's unbelievable. And yet do not Christians do that. It's sorry, but it happens. I'm not disagreeable, and then when you use your tongue to be disagreeable against others. It's Proverbs 5.4. Proverbs 5.4. 
Proverbs 5, 4. Proverbs 5, 4. Here's a strange woman, verse 3. But her end is bitter as wormwood. And wormwood is just a bitter plant. Strange women who go about strange ways with, with, with men and young males. What is her end? It's disagreeable. It's a sharp hell is disagreeable to the ways of God. Hell is so disagreeable. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Hell is so disagreeable that God says, I am long suffering. I'm not willing that any should perish. But if you want to keep on going in your sins and you do not want to do what I tell you to do, you don't want to adhere to the Bible. And then your end is bitter. Hell, one of the things you get is bitter. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Imagine being a place where it is pungent. It is disagreeable. It is sinful. It's afflicted. There's pain. There's cruel Along being tormented for all, forever. I'm going to go party with my friends. Really? That doesn't sound like a place to party. Not so. Proverbs 27, 7. Proverbs 27, 7. The fool so loveth, loatheth the honeycomb. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Now here's a kind of good bitter thing, but it's not good. You're starving. You just want to have anything. All right, here's some mustard greens. Oh, I'm so hungry, I'll eat that. That wasn't Esau. Esau said, I'm going to starve to death. I'll have, I want your beans. Then after he realized what the consequences of the beans were, that his birthright was sold, he didn't get what he wanted, then he had the bitter cry. But here, bitterness is, I have nothing else. Ew, I don't like that, but I'm going to eat it. You know what Jesus Christ had? He had to suffer and die that we may have life. That wasn't easy to take. It was not easy to for Jesus to take on our sins because he prayed in the garden three times, not for the death. He, pay, he prayed for that cup of our sins and the judgment of God upon him. All the bitterness of sin and agony and defeat was going to be placed upon Jesus Christ. Now that didn't taste good, but he took it. Because he loatheth he wants us to be with him he does not want anybody to go to hell so he took that bitter and as we just saw bitterness is the description of hell when jesus died he went into hell so we see jesus christ in in the study of bitter isaiah 5 20. Isaiah 5.20 Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that's America, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, that's America, and here's your churches, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. I'm going to sum it up one thing today. A woman got upset with me because I was screaming the fear of God through hell. I ought not to be preaching about hell. I ought to be preaching love. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? She said hell. Hell's a bitter place. You can't sugarcoat it. You sugarcoat it, you're going to get people who have easy believism. They're just going to say this prayer and they won't be saved. 
Churches are sugarcoating with 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 B, BBS. They're sugarcoating with all kinds of you know bounce houses and all kinds of of, of worldly childish sugary thing just to get the children to you know and maybe damn their soul. Nowhere did Peter, James, and John and the disciples of Jesus Christ had cookies, had bounce houses, had anything of such nonsense. They went out and preached the gospel. All that worldly stuff is sugariness, and you say, oh, our, our BBS works and all this, and we just have, look at all the children we are here. Well, we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day that are saved. We'll see who's right or wrong, but I believe you'll be wrong on that one. Isaiah 24, 9. Isaiah 24, 9. They shall not drink wine with a song. Huh, that's a bar room. Strong drink shall, they, shall be bitter to them that drink it. Oh, that word today. Oh, if God would eliminate alcohol together. But there's coming a time, there is coming troubles that even alcohol is not going to be a help. Praise God, we should be today. And get rid of cigarettes and tobacco. Jeremiah 2 9. You know, I just read the other day the churches set out to the prohibition of alcohol was, was by the churches. And then they gave up. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and will plead with your children, will I plead. Uh, Jeremiah 2, 19, excuse me, 2, 19. Thy own wickedness, thy own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy black backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee. Say if the Lord God of hosts. And that woman spoke about fear. Oh, you're just trying to scare people. You better believe it. April 25th, 1987, I was scared out of hell through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not been saved, will be saved, and not going to hell because I feared hell and I put my faith upon Jesus Christ. The Bible says you forsake God. Whether you're saved or you're lost, you're saved and you don't continue with God. You're lost and you won't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a bitter thing. God will spew the out of his mouth, Christian. That was written to a church, Revelation 3. God will cast the lost man off into hell that we are already seeing in Proverbs. Then you'll be have that bitter cry. You might even have the bitter cry of Esau and Mordecai in hell. Oh, I didn't get to heaven. I didn't get what I deserved. You got what you deserve, and you're going to just be frying forever and in Lamentations. Oh, we have no more hope. That's right. That's hell. That's the bitterness. Jeremiah 31 15. Jeremiah 31 15. Jeremiah 31 15. Thus saith the Lord, a voice heard in Ramah, lamentation, and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they were not. At the time of Jesus, around two years old, and that thing, Herod went through killing all the babies, all the children, trying to kill Jesus. It was a nation of the children of Israel, like the book of Exodus, they're just crying out. They are losing their children. The government is killing their children, and the mothers are crying, the fathers are crying. Yet in America, we have abortion, and no one is crying. We've gone a long way backwards, my friend. Long way. Jeremiah 31. Uh, Ezekiel 27, 31. Mothers ain't crying because they're killing their babies. They're happy. They got their life back. Oh, why don't we have a cure for the cancer? You might have killed the doctor who had the cure for cancer. Uh, Ezekiel 27, 31. I don't know. They shall make themselves utterly bold for thee, and gird thee with sackcloth. They shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. Because they rejected God. They rejected the word of God. They rejected the prophets that God has sent them. And you don't get good in loveliness. 
He don't get a happy life when you reject God and his words and the men. Now, you may live on this earth so happy, wonderful. You know, when we go preach to you, come to your door where you work or where you have entertained, wherever we go with the gospel, go into all the world and preach the gospel, you may reject God and you may have a happy life, but when you die, it will definitely, it will be for sure. And I can guarantee without God and Jesus Christ, your life will be in bitterness for all eternity. Christian, if you don't want to do what God tells you to do and you just say, I give up, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do what my friends want. I'm going to do what my family wants. I'm going to do in pursuit of the, the, the pleasures of life. You'll be in bitter when you're at the judgment seat of Christ and you, all you have is ashes. Ashes and ashes. Colossians 3.19. Colossians 3.19. This is serious. And because of the title, where's my clutch? I need to close over. Colossians 3.19. People will look at the title. The title is called Bitter. People, oh, I don't want to listen to that. Lie not one to another. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Am I in the right place? Colossians 3.19. I did it again. That's good. Lie not to another person. How's that? That steps outside the message, but there is in scripture. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Uh-oh. Sharp, pudgent, disagreeable, sarcastic, painful, afflicted, or sinful. Or a disagreeable, toxic plant. How's that? The Bible orders, commands a husband, don't you, bear, don't you be bitter against your wife. Don't you mistreat her. Don't you be sharp to her. Do not be disagreeable to her. Do not afflict her. Do not be painful upon her. And don't sin against her. It says, love your wives. And be not bitter against it. That's, wow. I didn't know that was in there. James 3. It's in there. You read and study your Bible, you'll find out. James 3, 11. The fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter. And then verse number 14. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not. And lie not against the truth. So, you can't say, I got a sweet water and I got bitter water. They come from the same source. Exodus just proved that. They came to a water, Mara, and it was, it was ugh, bitter. It was, ugh, I don't like it. Moses put the tree in there, it became sweet, and then they came to 12 wells of water that was sweet. And he goes about in chapter 3 talking about the tongue. You can't have a good tongue and you can't have an evil tongue from the one tongue. Either your tongue is going to serve God or it's going to serve the devil and flesh in the world. You can't have it both ways. And for if ye bitter envying, ye just so disagreeable, so sharp on... Envy of that person has something or that person's getting something that you deserve or want or have a need of. Oh, and sin is not good either. So we're finding with the word bitter, we're finding sin, we're finding a conduct that does not be coming for a Christian. And we find it for lost people rejecting and continue to reject God. That's not good. Revelation 8.11. Revelation 8.11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Remember Proverbs? And the third part of the warriors became Wormwood. And, men, and many men died of the warriors because they were made bitter. Look at the reference to bitter and drinking. 
There's coming a time in the future, in the tribulation period, men are going to die because the waters they drink, the bottled water, uh, the water that comes out of the water fountain, the water that's going to come into your kitchen, the water that's sitting in the bottle in your refrigerator is going to be bitter. And you're not going to drink it. And you won't drink it. And you will die of dehydration. It's a judgment upon uh, of God upon man because of their sin and their wickedness in the time of the tribulation period. Just like the Israelites, they came to it and God was testing the Israelites. If you just go a little further, there are sweet waters. You know, it's a little further from, uh, from Revelation 8, 11. There's the sweet waters. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. And it comes at the end of the great tribulation, at the end of the seven years of the period called the tribulation. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, is coming as a lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's going to be angry. He's going to be fierce against the enemies of God, against the enemies of Jesus, against the enemies of the Jews. This wrath of God. And then once that wrath and the judgments of nations happens and the goats have been separated from the sheep, Oh, that water of life will be in the millennium. That water of life will be in Jerusalem. Oh, the comfort and the thirst quencher of Jesus Christ in the millennium. He said he's the water of life. Revelation 10, 9. I went and the angel said to me, give me the little book. And he said to me, take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. As soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. You know what the Word of God is sometimes? Oh, I love reading. Oh, look at, oh, look at the information you got. Uh, God, why did you just mention my sin? God, why did you put, God, that's my sin, that's my, God, oh. Thank you very much, God. I, I, like, I really had to read that today. That's exactly what I did today, God. And this is my daily reading. Uh, oh. Any other day of, the, day of the year, I like to read the Bible. But that right there today, oh, God. Yeah, aren't we reminded of a story in, in Numbers? When that woman stepped out of her husband and it became bitter and, and a curse. Our sins are to be bitter and cursed when we read about them in the Bible. And if we're reading our Bible today, okay, this is what I'm reading, we're studying, reading along. And you come to the read and you're clean. And you're, you're standing and God is sure in your state and it's pretty clean. And you go through the Bible, it's like, wow, interesting, good. Oh man, I'm at the end of reading today. Oh, wow. I should read more, but... The Bible can be sweet to read, yet the Bible could be bitter to read by us digesting of who we really are, our sins. It's not good to read about our sins. We don't like that. Oh, we read about, oh yeah, that's that guy over there. Oh, that's, my, that's my co-worker. That's the guy in church. And that's the, the, him over there, my neighbor. And that's Oh, that's me. You know, all the women could look at the women at the time and say, look, uh, 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 he's bringing his wife to the table. He thinks she's been quit. And then, wait a minute. That's what I was doing. That's what I've done. Oh, my husband to bring me. Bitter. We accidentally skipped one place. Amos 8.10. Sorry about that. Amos. 8.10. We're not supposed to have pleasure when we sin. And when we come to our sin in the Bible, we ought not pass it over like a marathon. Oh, well, look at that. We ought to look at that and say, you know what? That's me, God. And you're speaking to me, God. And I, I'm disagreeable. Not disagreeable by what I'm reading. It's disagreeable that I'm not living right. And the Bible says, if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just to forget. Lord, I got to confess that. I am so sorry. I'm sorry I do that so frequently, Lord. That's in there. I, I ought to know better. That's how we're to react. Amos 8.10. 
I will turn your feast in the morning and your songs into lamentations. I will bring up sackcloth upon your loins, boldness upon every head. I will make it as a morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. That's rejecting God. So bitterness we see is, is a aftertaste upon the judgment of God because of our sins. When we don't walk correctly like we should, and then when we do have extreme pain or pain that we don't think we control situations in our life that just seem, you know, like Job, oh, I'm over my head. There is that bitterness. But don't turn that bitterness, that bitterness into a sin by going against God. Get closer to God. And then get closer to Jesus, who's the living water. He can change that, that bitter water into fresh water, refreshing water. That you will say, oh, I want more, instead of going, oh. I hope you take this lesson and tell your friends and say, hey, listen, you may not like the title. You may not like how he says that you may not like the subject, but it's important. It's important enough that he took the time to do it. We all got bitterness somewhere. Again, I apologize for the darkness and don't let that hinder you from listening to what God has to say. 